Hey, Iremia from uh, Lani, soon to be at uh, USC. Um, and he's going to tell us about neuroimaging of structural pathology and connectomics in traumatic brain injury. So, okay. please. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I thank you. I'd like to thank you for this great opportunity to be here. Uh, I am <clears throat> a neuroimaging, a neuroimaging scientist in the laboratory of neuroimaging at the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, and my primary research interest involves the combined use of multimodal structural neuroimaging, multimodal uh, diffusion uh, tensor imaging, and electrophysiological recordings to address important challenges facing the uh, clinical community who are interested in improving outcome scores in traumatic brain injury. So uh, in our group, we have adopted a tripartite approach to the study of TBI. As neuroimaging scientists, we are um, in very close collaboration with our clinical colleagues at the Ronald Reagan Medical uh, Center at uh, University of California, Los Angeles where we acquire multimodal neuroimaging data sets from uh, acute TBI patients. Uh, these are uh, severe uh, cases of TBI who are um, uh, patients that are admitted to the neurointensive care unit at the hospital. And in addition to typical uh, imaging modalities such as uh, MRI and DTI, we're also interested in uh, the use of uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy as well as functional imaging methods such as fMRI and electroencephalography, EEG. Uh, and uh, we rely intensely on biomed biomedical um, engineering techniques to analyze our imaging ele and electrophysiological data using uh, novel techniques that, uh, including information theory uh, and network theory, nonlinear dynamics and connectomics to explore changes that occur uh, in the TBI brain in throughout time. So to give you a, a brief overview of our research protocol, um, I'd like to show you a set of uh, uh, longitudinal MR images that are acquired from several patients in our hospital. As you can see, these are multimodal data sets, um, and they are also longitudinal data sets. We acquire uh, data at two time points. One of them is acute, approximately less than 72 hours uh, after admission to the medical center and chronically at about six months after uh, injury uh, so that we can uh, study more with uh, uh, improved accuracy the process of uh, healing and repair in the brains of these subjects. Uh, the first and the most chal uh, important challenge that we have faced in uh, dealing with these data sets and in analyzing these data in involves the combination of modalities to perform uh, segmentation of tissues in traumatic brain injury. And as you can see, uh, we are using several types of uh, imaging techniques, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, the the MPRAGE uh, T1, uh, and also the fl uh, uh, FLARE GRE T2 and SWI modalities, which give us the opportunity to image CSF perfused edema in the case of flare, as well as uh, hemorrhage in the brain in the case of GRE and SWI. Uh, yeah, the challenge that we're facing in the case of uh, TBI segmentation as opposed to segmentation of uh, adult brains from, uh, who are, which are normal or which have less severe pathologies such as uh, Parkinson's or um, Alzheimer's is that we have to account for uh, a large extent of structural complexity in dealing with the size and the position and uh, type of lesion that are present in the brains of these subjects. And as you can see, the lesion profiles can be uh, uh, very heterogeneous from patient to patient, and it is often difficult to separate the tissue types and to characterize each voxel and to um, assign it a certain pathology type. 
Uh, and what we have done is that we have acquired a semi-automatic uh, segmentation approach in collaboration with our colleagues at the University of Utah, um, led by Dr. Uh, Guido Garrick here in the audience. And what we have performed is a uh, quantification of longitudinal changes based on these uh, semi-automatic methods of segmentation. And as you can see, um, we're able to uh, segment the cerebrospinal fluid uh, swelling and uh, blood that occurs in the, uh, three day, in the acute case in these TBI patients and to localize the, uh, and characterize the uh, type of lesion in each case. And then at six months after injury, we're able to uh, characterize the necrosis and the bleeds that are still existent in the brain, as well as the changes that have occurred between the two time points. We are, aside from uh, these challenges, we're also interested in quantifying morphometric uh, alterations to the brain. Uh, and in this type of visualization, what we have done is uh, to uh, overlay the acute, uh, the, the structure of the brain at the acute time point, which is depicted in red, to the structure of the brain at the chronic time point, six months after injury, uh, shown in green. And as you can see, there, is, uh, quite a bit, there are quite a bit of differences. Uh, here, uh, there is a lot of red, which is, uh, in this case, due to a... Uh, an injury, on uh, primary injury in this patient, uh, but also there is a lot of, um, there's a midline shift which is, uh, which can be seen by this uh, area where red overlays uh, the green, uh, and then after uh, six months we can see a dramatic change in the position and uh, structural profile of the ventricular system, and there has been uh, there have been a number of um, studies that have connected the structure of the ventricular system to uh, outcome scores in traumatic brain injury. Uh, and from there, we would like to um, also explore how diffusion imaging can be integrated into these uh, this type of application in order to study changes to the white matter structure of the brain. And as you, uh, as you well know, the, uh, het, uh, there is a lot of heterogeneity in TBI. Here you can see this, there are three uh, cases of uh, acute TBI with different uh, lesion loads and different types of pathology, with uh, uh, red representing uh, hemorrhaging brain and green representing edemic uh, non-hemorrhaging brain. And what we have done is uh, we have undertaken the task of segmenting the gyral and sulcal structures of the brain to create a parcellation scheme that can allow us to integrate our DTI uh, processing techniques with this type of application. And we have chosen a different color scheme for each lobe of the brain. And within that color scheme, we have colored each gyrus and sulcus uh, using a different color. So, using these methods, we have gone on to map the connectome in traumatic brain injury. So, using starting with automatic segmentation of the cortex and subcortical structures, and the DTI tractography that we have, we are able to perform. We have performed this automatic parcellation of the gyri and sulci in the brain, and then determined the connectivity matrix uh, of the. Um, cortex, so this connectivity matrix has, is a, uh, uh, an n by n matrix which contains uh, um, entries for each gyrus and sulcus, uh, and then there is an entry in the matrix if there is a uh, connection between, one re between the region represented, say, here, and the region represented, say, here. So uh, using these type of techniques, we have uh, uh, proposed uh, a type of visualization which is called a connectogram, and this is a comprehensive visualization of the TBI connectome at a scale that has uh, been previously unavailable. And before I uh, say more about this, I'd like to explain what connectograms are. So first of all, uh, a, the connectome is, uh, an is the complete ensemble of uh, white matter connections in the brain, and the study of the connectome is called connectomics. 
So our, uh, one of our uh, contributions to the field is the introduction of this visualization technique called the connectogram, where you can see the left and right hemispheres uh, of the brain represented. Uh, the subcortical structures are represented here. Uh, then we have, within each lobe, we have uh, each um, region of the, uh, of the cortex represented either as a sulcus or a gyrus, with a color on the outside corresponding to the color of the structure on the cortex, and so on. We go for insular cortex, limbic cortex, temporal, parietal, and occipital cortex, and each region of the cortex, whether a gyrus or a sulcus, is represented by uh, a different type, a different color within its own, co within its own color scheme. And the links that, are, that um, connect any two regions are uh, connections between the, either a gyrus or a sulcus, between any of the regions involved, or uh, perhaps connections between the subcortical structures and cortex. And uh, the um, uh, interesting thing that can be done with these um, types of visualizations is basically encoding, uh, the, performing an, a systematic encoding of the white matter and cortical properties of the brain. And uh, there, this is the legend for the connectogram inner circles. We have a parcellation code uh, representing each, each parcellated gyrus or sulcus. And then on the inside of the connectogram are uh, color encodings of gray matter volume, parcellation area, mean gray matter thickness, a mean curvature and degree of connectivity of that region. So the outside of the connectogram shows the uh, structural information associated with uh, this patient. And then uh, th we have divided, uh, we have encoded also for each link between regions, we have encoded uh, FA in the color so that the lowest tercile of FA is colored in blue, the uh, middle tercile a medium FA is uh, displayed in green, and uh, links that have a high FA are shown in red. So what we have done, first of all, before uh, uh, analyzing uh, this, before ap applying this methodology to TBI, we have applied it to a set of 110 uh, healthy human adults of age 25 to 36. Uh, this was published in NeuroImage. And what this represents here is a uh, uh, systematic representation of the human connectome, of the average human connectome, uh, for this normal healthy adult population at a uh, resolution and uh, degree of systematization which is, has previously been un, uh, unavailable in the uh, scientific literature. And uh, most interestingly, uh, we have quantified how TBI modulates atrophy in the context of the human connectome. And these are three um, uh, connectograms from three different subjects uh, showing connections involved in primary TBI. So all the regions, all the uh, links displayed in each connectogram uh, denote regions that were involved in the primary injury of the patient. And then six months after injury, we have uh, repeated the process, created connectograms, and performed the analysis for all these patients. And uh, we have found various degrees of atrophy in the brain of each patient uh, along the white matter fibers connecting various regions. And as you can see, there, uh, although there is some agreement, uh, there is quite a bit of heterogeneity in the uh, extent to which uh, the brain of each patient is atrophied, and there is no clear correspondence between the location of primary um, lesioning in along white matter fibers in the acute time point compared to the chronic time point. So this highlights that we really need a systematic uh, connectomic approach in order to evaluate how um, white matter, how injuries to the white matter uh, either heal or atrophy uh, after injury. And uh, I would like to say a little bit about how we are uh, taking the next step to integrate uh, this type of structural neuroimaging involving uh, MR and diffusion tensor neuroimaging with uh, electrophysiological data and specifically with uh, inverse localization of 
uh, EEG data acquired from uh, acute TBI patients that were um, uh, in the uh, uh, NICU uh, under continuous EEG monitoring. And what we have done is we have uh, combined all the MR modalities that we've uh, had access to with CT imaging and created uh, a high resolution finite element models with as many as 400,000 icosahedral elements and uh, as many as 25 tissue types included in the um, in the model in order to accurately account for every tissue type, including pathology, including different types of pathology. And, this, and based on this type of models, we have gone on to uh, generate forward and inverse models of EEG in traumatic brain injury. So these are, uh, with 25 tissue types, by the way, this is the most accurate finite element model uh, that is uh, that we are aware of being uh, available in the scientific literature so far. And based on these um, recordings, we have looked at the sensor space EEG waveforms the, that are recorded by the EEG sensors in the uh, NICU from these patients. We have isolated uh, um, epileptiform activity, such as this epileptiform spike here. Here is the display in sensor space, and this arrow represents the localization of, uh, of this um, uh, negative deflection in source space, namely on the cortical surface. Why is this important? It's important because about 30% of uh, TBI survivors are prone to post-traumatic epilepsy, and thus far it has been extremely difficult to perform a neurosurgery for elimination, for uh, resection of these epileptic foci due to the inability to uh, accurately localize them in the cortex. However, with the advent of this type of technique, which is extremely accurate and uh, um, extremely advanced from the standpoint of the number of, um, number of tissues that are represented, we are able to um, push this to the uh, next level and perform accurate localization of uh, epileptiform activity uh, with a high degree of accuracy. And I encourage you to look at uh, this paper that has uh, just been posted online in Clinical Neurophysiology for more details on this. So finally, just to show you as a, uh, just as a, a cameo of what we have done and just as an, uh, an example of our work, uh, I'd like to show you this uh, uh, visualization about a very famous case in the history of neurology, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It's the case of Phineas Gage, who in the 1860s, I'm sorry, in the 1840s, uh, had uh, a rod uh, 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 pierce, pierced his head when he was uh, working on the, on, a rail, uh, uh, on the railway in Vermont. Um, and... Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the details uh, of the story, but the idea is that uh, this individual had a, 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 pier a rod, a uh, tamping iron, piercing uh, through his uh, head and destroying part of his brain, and miraculously he survived and uh, recovered to live another um, approximately 20 years. What we have done here is we have uh, created a sophisticated uh, environment to fit the brains of 110 normal human, uh, normal human adults with, um, that had his uh, age and the demographic characteristics. And we have created basically a simulation of the white matter fibers that would have been destroyed uh, by, his, uh, by the tamping iron as it went through his head. Oops. And I have a video, which let's see if I can get it to run. Maybe I need a little help with that. Um, okay, so this is uh, just a rendering of the case. And it shows the, our modeling, including the CT skull of Phineas Gage, which we recovered uh, from Harvard Medical School uh, uh, with thanks from Dr. Ron Kikinis. The uh, skull of the patient is located at the Harvard um, uh, medical museum, and this is a representation of the white matter fibers that were uh, destroyed and, that, and some of the ones that were um, still uh, left after uh, injury to the patient. 
So uh, this uh, article is one that I encourage you to look more, uh, further into. It's been featured in the press as well as as a, um, a featured story in Discover Magazine, uh, I think, last year. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, um, uh, attempt to reconstruct some interesting features about this very important case in the history of neurology. And uh, let's see if I can go further. Um, can we advance to the next slide? I'm not able to do so. I just need to go to the next slide, that's all. Could we advance the slide? I think he's trying. Well, uh, I suppose uh, uh, one thing... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, I guess this... I only had a, a few other slides. Uh, I just wanted to encourage you to take a look at our papers that... Uh, on, on this uh, set of topics, and I'd like to thank all our collaborators, uh, including uh, the group of uh, Guido Gehrig. Oh, okay, so here is uh, the connectogram of Phineas Gage uh, and showing the connections that were destroyed in his brain. And these are some of the papers that describe the work that I presented today, and I encourage you to take a look at them. Uh, we've been featured on the Journal of Neurotrauma on a special issue on uh, biomedical imaging, uh, biomedical engineering for TBI. Uh, the connectogram has been featured on the cover of NeuroImage and we've sub had some of our DTI work in uh, brain imaging and behavior. I encourage you to look at all these uh, very interesting and uh, exciting uh, efforts we've looked at. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Veneer and all the organizers of this exciting workshop. Uh, our group at UCLA, uh, our group at the University of Utah led by Dr. Gehrig who spoke earlier. Uh, our collaborators at Kitware and UNC Chapel Hill, Harvard Medical School, Dr. Ron Kikinis, UC Irvine, Boston University, Dynamic Consortium, which sponsors our work uh, through these uh, grants, and the Human Connectome Projects, which all are, we are actively involved in. Uh, so I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>